little snapshot. So last weekend I ran for politics in the, the local election in Cunningham. Um, ran for the Science Party. And it's the first time Science Party's actually run in that region. And the first time I've ever run for politics. So it's interesting. So the Cunningham electorate is about an hour south of Sydney. And it's like the Wollongong, Illawarra area. And it's been a safe Labour seat for the past 65 hours, 67 years. So the Labour candidate won you know, 60% of the vote. But what was cool is I actually got 2.6% of the vote, which isn't enough to qualify for funding. You get funding if you hit 4%, but it was about double or triple what other science party candidates got. So obviously this is the first major issue with politics, the fact that you can have um, kind of like safe seats where they just always go to the same political party. So the lady that won, Sharon Bird, she's really nice, but she's been in the job for 14 years. So unless you have the resources to outspend the entrenched political candidates, um, you have to do something more grey area, more like just hacking, finding data, finding the influences. So when I was asked to run by some of my mates who started the Science Party, I was like, yeah, cool, I'll run, but I want to work out a way to hack the election. I want to work out a way to, to get to the influencers cheaply with zero resources and to get my message across. One idea I really wanted them to float at was a four-day workweek policy as a way to kind of just um, get the masses interested, cause controversy, get a lot of media attention. Because um, science is great, but it's a bit boring. Like the Science Party uh, policies, they're really great rational policies and across the board, not just on one specific issue. But their main, their main things were like doubling the science research funding budget, which isn't sexy to them. Yeah, it isn't sexy to the masses, and it doesn't cause a lot of media controversy to, to get attention. Um, and if you look at, like, Trump's campaign, attention is everything. Attention precedes policy. So I thought, cool, Australians love a long weekend. Wouldn't it be great if we had a long weekend every weekend? And wouldn't it be great, be great if we actually implemented a four-day work week so that that ties in with technological automation replacing jobs? Anyway, that became a discussion piece and not a policy, so whatever, maybe next time. Um, so the next thing I wanted to do is work out who are the influencers in my local area. So there's actually only 100,000 registered voters in Cunningham. And actually, it's, in, it's the same in most electorates. So most electorates are split up to uh, about a, a population, a registered voting population of 100,000 people, which is not a lot of people. Yeah. So my thinking was, like, out of 100,000 people, there's probably maybe, like, a 1,000 influencers. And if you can get your message across to them and convince them, then they will naturally spread it throughout the rest of the hive. Okay, cool. So how do you do that locally? Um, well, I'm a bit of a, a data junkie. I love finding data sources that no one else knows about in kind of grey areas and then using because data is power. If you combine two data sources together, then that's enough to find insights and find the influences. And so that's what I tried to do with the Facebook Graph API. My quickest, easiest assumption was that the Facebook group owners, the people who create Facebook groups and who um, are the moderators and the people who post the most in them tend to be the influences of that area within that niche. Like in Wollongong, I started quite a few Facebook groups that are fairly popular um, in the spaces of like, uh, so Gong Startups, which is like startups entrepreneurship and Hacker Gong, which is like hackathons and makers. And so, you know, I, I'm kind of a little bit influential in, in, that, in those groups. At least a lot of people know me, um, kind of like the center of those little niches. So if you could do that for every group in a local area, then you'd have a pretty quick and easy, um, not, not complete, but a quick and easy list of potential influences in that area. Then what you can do is actually pair that to the electoral roll data that the AUC gives you. And in that data, you can access their um, mobile phone number, their address, and their name. All you need to do is compare the name of the Facebook influencer to that. Now you have a list of all the influencers in a local area and you have their mobile phone numbers and their street address. Now you can make Facebook custom audiences and target ads just to those people. So I didn't really have time to get around to doing that. I did actually write the code and I did start scraping the Facebook groups, um, but we weren't, we didn't get access to the electoral roll data and I also just ran out of time because I'd do too many things. Instead I basically just scrambled with the resources I had. So we had 10,000 um, how to vote flyers and we had 12 core flutes, two t-shirts and four lab coats <laughs> and like 10 volunteers. <laughs> so I put up nine core flutes in random areas in kind of like like really weird places like um, underneath traffic lights and at, in, at the intersection of roundabouts. I'm not sure if you're allowed to put them there. And then we did 7,000 letterbox drops um, around the area in different suburbs, mostly in like northern suburbs. We didn't really focus too much on the southern suburbs because they're like more hardcore Labour supporters. <laughs> And then since I only had roughly 10 volunteers um, on the election day across 45 different booths, 45, 50 different booths, we had were scattered around. But having people manning booths and handing out how to vote cards is huge. It's, it actually like doubles or triples your vote because a lot of people are just apathetic, ignorant voters and they walk in, they decide on the day. Another reason for that is that the Australian elections actually require you by law to go and vote. Um, you can do a donkey vote, like you can just like you know, fake it and put it, you know, draw whatever. But if you don't vote, you get fined. Things like $200 or something. Okay, so at the start I said message, reach, and personalization. So message is all about customizing the message, um, an overall picture of like what you're selling, the tagline. Reach is about like getting into the eyeballs of every single voter, like before the election, for, for many years beforehand, building up a rapport, building up an image, building up an identity and a connection. 
And personalization is about uh, basically personalizing policy or at least personalizing the cell. Um, with Science Party, there's so many different policies, but usually only one resonates with people more than others. <laughs> Actually, or even the opposite of that. There are some people who are like, all the policies are great, Science Party, great, 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 and they pick out like legalizing gay marriage and they're against that, so they didn't vote for us, and that's weird. Okay, so it was a great insight into how the political process works and how fucked up it is and how chaotic it is and how unorganized and unstructured it is and messy. So to win the next one in three or four years, this is what I do. Let's go. So you need to really build up that graph. So you need to graph absolutely everyone in the entire electorate, all the 100,000 registered voters. You need to know who their friends are, who their workmates are, who they listen to. So you collect a whole bunch of different data sources and pull them all together. So across all social media, across every type of data you can possibly find, um, and even manual data entry as well, collecting over phone calls or surveys. At the end of three years, you want to end up with like a micro Facebook graph of sorts uh, in an API that's, that maps and connects every individual, um, all their political passion pieces and everything they do. Because with that data, you can actually work out who the influencers are quite easily. You can look at the whole network and you can see that, okay, if I this person is an influence of that particular political topic, if I get to that person, they'll spread the message. If you look up YouTube for um, Obama re-election campaign data scientists, he, he gave a great talk um, about what they actually did. So they did a similar thing. They collected as much data sources as possible, like old data sets, live data sets, streaming in from different providers. I think he, the guy said it was tens of terabytes, which is a small data set for what he's normally compared to working with, with corporate entities. And from that, they had a list of every single, I guess like voter, every single uh, person in America, and they ranked them on a scale of zero to 100. 100 being most likely to re-elect Obama, zero being most unlikely. Then they just employed traditional tactics, so they just started at the top and they just guaranteed, they just reached every person going down the list, um, you know, with phone calls, with door knocks, with flyers, with uh, ads, like mailing campaigns and A-B testing campaigns and everything, just basically getting to those top people and just working your way down the list and kind of like guaranteeing that you'll get their, their vote for the re-election. Because yeah, once you've got that local graph of like how everyone's interconnected, uh, what all their political leanings are, what their major political issues are, um, and who the influencers are, then you can start A-B testing messaging. <laughs> but uh, even after all that, uh, D-Day, like on election day, it's still going to be really important to still have how to vote cards um, and have volunteers at every single booth handing out how to vote cards. And for that one, actually on, on election day, I had a very kind of, it's a little bit evil, a little bit grey area idea on what you could do to, to manipulate that and to get a massive advantage on it. So this is like grey area stuff, I'm not sure I'll actually do it or not, but it would be really cool. What you do is you hide IP cameras up around in local areas and you just take pictures of people's faces. It's actually legal to take photos of people in public, so what you could do is you have these cameras in public places just constantly like taking photos of people's faces, and it builds up a facial recognition database of everyone in that region. If you pair a face to the graph data and like who is actually registered on the graph data, now you have facial recognition APIs and capabilities, which you can then apply to AR augmented reality HUDs on election day. So imagine now uh, you have two volunteers at every booth, so you just need say 90, 100 volunteers, and they're all equipped with augmented reality HUDs, and this is like three, four years from now, so you'd hope that, that technology would be Hopefully these glasses would look normal enough, but so what would happen is the volunteer would be wearing them and as a voter walks towards them, it recognizes their face and does a search and looks up their information. It can then immediately hover over their head uh, saying this is the political issue that resonates with them most and it gives you a one-liner to say to them as you're handing out the card. So here's an example. Because I know it's on election day, there's actually three types of people. There's the ones who will walk straight through and won't want to take any flyers from anyone, they're already decided. Uh, there's the ones that will take a flyer from every individual, and there's the ones that are going just for one party. They have like five seconds to give it a spiel. So most of mine were just like one-liners, like, you know, yeah, science, science, increased science funding, which it's not great. But because you obviously had no, no idea of who's walking towards you and what their political leanings are and what issues resonate with them most, you can't do anything. You have to just give a blanket statement, um, which is really hard to sell. However, I did find myself almost subconsciously profiling people as they, as they walk towards you. Um, so, for example, there was one lady who looked like, you know, you know stereotypical uh, greens, hippie kind of voter. And I was like, yeah, have you heard of science party? She's like, no, I haven't actually. Um, so I, I spouted off the, you know, yeah, we're all about science and technology and education and increasing science research funding. And she's like, oh, that's all good. And then very subconsciously, my next cell was, uh, oh, so we have like uh, policies on asylum seekers, you know, where we should treat them more humanely, shut down detention centers, or like, you know, all the obvious shit that parties should be doing. And yeah, that really resonated with her, so wouldn't it be great if I had an AR overlay that actually told me as she was walking towards me, hey, this, this lady's really into asylum seekers, say this line while you hand her a flyer. Now that sounds a little bit like manipulative and evil, but it's just using technology um, to basically hack the system, to break a 65-year dictatorship, which is the only way you can do it. And with something like that, you're not even lying, like you're not personalizing policy you know, on the fly, like you're still actually being consistent with your own policy, you're just picking the policy that applies best to them, that individual. I actually think that's one of the reasons why there's so much apathy in politics and why people just uh, ignore it and it's just 
they just don't like it because it's not personalized to them. Like, unless the issue affects them personally, they don't care. We live in a world of like personalized Facebook feeds and personalized Reddit feeds and personalized Netflix recommendations and personalized music recommendations, but we don't do the same with politics yet. So why don't we? So there you go, build up a local graph API and graph network over three years. Identify the influences, A-B test your messaging, and then personalize it. Um, and then just really like expose your face and brand out there. And as a side note, this is why we need to decentralize the political party system, because more money equals more reach equals more votes. And the whole thing's become a big data marketing focus rather than the actual policy and vision. So what do you think? Sappy thoughts. Happy